Hello everybody. Uh, today I am going to deliver the second lecture of the module 12. In module 12, I was discussing about the numerical methods uh, to be applied for the solution of equation of motion in dynamic problem. So in the first lecture, I have discussed the numerical methods uh, that is applicable for Duhamel integral and uh, I have uh, illustrated a problem with arbitrary type of excitation to a continuous system. Now uh, in this lecture I will discuss about the direct integration methods. This direct integration methods is a very popular tool in uh, numerical analysis especially those who are using the finite element software or finite element packages they should know about the direct integration methods. In this method the uh, time domain equations are solved without transforming this uh, in any other form. Say we do not transform it in the Laplace domain or Fourier domain, we directly solve the time domain equations. Therefore, this method is named as direct integration method. Okay. Now different direct integration methods are available in uh, current literatures. And these are central difference method, Wilson theta method, Howbolt method, Newmark method. Each of the methods has its own advantage and disadvantage. The main issue in direct integration method is the convergence of the solution. So convergence actually generally governed by the time step that are chosen in the numerical integration. Uh, here uh, if you compare uh, one method with another method you will find each method differ uh, has set some criteria for selecting the uh, the stability uh, time step for stability and convergence. So now in this lecture I will discuss the first method that is the central difference method I will discuss with uh, the formulation and this fourth method I will discuss. So these two methods will be discussed in this course. Other methods can be also learned in a similar way because the, uh, the formulation and derivations follows similar steps. So what I want to say you that in these two methods I will discuss from the first principle that how the direct integration method using the central difference scheme and other uh, scheme that is Newmark method it is published by Newmark is formulated that is the intermediate steps I will try to uh, show you how this is done. Okay. Now today's uh, lecture will consist of different direct integration methods for dynamic equation that I have discussed already in the previous slides. Then central difference method I will discuss in detail. Newmark's method also I will discuss in detail with the derivations and then I will show you a numerical problems with some few steps. Although this is a numerical example solved here manually but uh, since it is a uh, direct integration steam scheme that is step by step integration. So therefore uh, with small time steps large number of steps will be involved. So in that case you require to go for some automation for solving the problem. That means you have to develop the scheme in computer either in MATLAB or in any other language that you prefer. Let us see what is direct integration scheme. In the direct integration scheme, equation of motion in time domain are integrated using step by step procedure. So knowing the, uh, the response quantities that is displacement, velocity and acceleration in the PBR steps, we can determine the uh, corresponding quanti quantity in quantities in the current step and these quantities again become the initial condition for the next time interval. So like that it will go on in a step by step manner and ultimately 
uh, at the end of total time span the response is stored ok the term direct is used because uh, it is not transformed in any other domain the method requires to satisfy the equation of motion during small time interval delta t instead of satisfying it at any time instant t so we will uh, see that at any time interval delta t which may not be uniform during the entire uh, length of integration but within the small interval delta t the dynamic equation of equilibrium is satisfied so let us first discuss the central difference scheme here we use finite difference approximation of the time derivative of the displacement velocity and acceleration take constant time step delta ti equal to delta t now we have for example uh, if i take the different time step say here the ti it is ti plus 1 like that and there in the previous step i have ti minus 1 so there suppose the displacement here is u i plus 1 and here it is u i and here it is u i minus 1 similarly the corresponding velocity will be u dot i plus 1 and acceleration will be u double dot i plus 1 like that other quantities can also be expressed so in finite difference form we can write the velocity u dot i at the time step here uh, ui the time step is taken here delta t which is uniform so using the finite difference approximation we can write the first derivative of u i that is uh, u dot i equal to u i plus 1 minus u i minus 1 divided by 2 delta t that is central difference scheme then u double dot i that is the acceleration of the system is equal to u i plus 1 minus 2 u i plus u i minus 1 divided by delta t square so you can see the second derivative involved this displacement here at t i plus 1 then displacement at this uh, i t i and t i minus 1 whereas the first derivative that is the velocity uses the displacement at i plus 1 and i minus 1 and gap between these two points is determined here it is 280 so this is the slope of the time versus displacement curve now equation of motion at instant ti at any instant ti's can be written as m u double dot i that is the inertia term plus c u dot i plus k u i equal to pi pi is the force at i at time interval so this method can in incorporate any type of force so any type of arbitrary force can be represented so here the force function forcing function is represented by pt and the variation of force with respect to time may be arbitrary because we are issuing the numerical integration scheme so we can use such scheme for this seismic analysis also when the ground motion is very much random a sample of acceleration time history is random in nature no mathematical function can be fitted so in this type of uh, random time history so therefore we can use the step by step integration scheme so the equation of equilibrium is uh, shown here this is the inertia term this is the damping term and this is the the elastic force due to uh, the stiffness of the system okay 
Now after substitution of u dot i and u double dot i, what is u dot i? u dot i we have found here in this equation u dot i is there and it is u i plus 1 minus u i minus 1. What is u double dot i? u double dot i is found here u double dot i equal to u i plus 1 minus 2 u i plus u i minus 1 divided by delta t whole square. So, substituting this parameter that is velocity and acceleration here we can now express the equation in this form. You can see the m into third bracket that I have placed the quantity inside the third bracket is nothing but this expression then c into u dot i. So, here inside the third bracket the coefficient of c is nothing but nothing but this velocity expression in finite difference form plus k u i equal to b i. Now, you can see we have three uh, displacement coordinates means uh, displacement at three time instants that means uh, displacement at time instant uh, i plus 1 then this is this u i is the displacement at time instant i and displacement at time instant u i minus 1. But we require for example here knowing the displacement at the time instant i and its previous time instant i minus 1 we can now calculate the displacement at the next time step that is i plus 1. So, therefore, we are targeting to find u i plus 1 therefore, we are uh, separating the uh, terms containing u i plus 1. So, you can see here the term containing u i plus 1 here uh, appears with a coefficient m divided by delta t square. Similarly, here you can see the term containing u i plus 1 is uh, with coefficient c divided by 2 delta t. So, hence we can write this m divided by delta t square plus c divided by 2 delta t. This is the coefficient of u i plus 1. So, u i plus 1 is here equal to T i was already existing that is the force at the time instant T i and P i and we are now transferring the quantities other quantities on the right hand side. So, these quantities will be with the displacement at uh, step T i and T i minus 1. So, here you can see P i minus m divided by delta t square minus c divided by 2 delta t then into u i minus 1 minus k minus 2 m divided by delta t whole square u i. So, you can see now here that u i multiplied by some constant and this term we can denoted by effective force. So, here k cap is the effective stiffness and p cap is the effective load. So, that is representing a similar equation for the static equilibrium. So, k into displacement that is k delta equal to p that we, we are very much familiar with this type of equation in static analysis. Now, here you are getting similar type of equation. So, here, but k is here not the actual uh, k that is uh, given in the system parameters of the uh, model. Here, k cap is the effective stiffness, and effective stiffness now is a function of m mass then time step function of uh, damping and time step. So, the, you can see this is the effective stiffness, effective force or load 
is also being influenced by this uh, mass stiffness, mass and damping specially and also the original spring constant and then time step. And again this PBS uh, displacement ui and ui minus 1 uh, are also appearing in the effective load expression. So once we know this expression similar to the static equilibrium equations we can find ui plus 1 equal to k cap inverse into effective uh, p that is the effective load that means if it is a single degree freedom system that it can be written like that p cap divided by k cap but this system uh, this scheme is used for multi degree freedom system also so therefore generally a stiffness matrix will be formed and we require to inverse the stiffness matrix so therefore i have written with an inverse sign so that you can apply to the matrix equation also. So once ui plus is known then calculate u dot i. So we know the uh, uh, displacement at i plus 1 t is equal to t i plus 1 provided we know the displacement at uh, t is equal to t i and t is equal to t i minus 1. So knowing u i plus 1 now I can determine the velocity at the time instant u i dot equal to u i plus 1 minus u i minus 1 divided by 2 delta t then u i double dot equal to that is the acceleration equal to u i plus 1 minus 2 u i plus u i minus 1 divided by delta t square. In this equation you can see this is already given and we have found out this after solving the uh, static equilibrium equation where of course the stiffness matrix is modified in uh, due to central difference scheme and therefore here this uh, the ui plus 1 is already solved by this uh, inversion of stiffness matrix there is effective stiffness matrix with p effective that is the effective load then you will get this ui plus 1. So once you know this then we know this quantity and ui minus 1 is given in our scheme that we know the, the quantity before starting the integration. So therefore we determine this uh, u dot i and u double dot i. So in the next time step replace i plus 1 and repeat the above steps to find replace i by i plus 1. So in the next step replace i by i plus 1. So that means here uh, you know the quantity at i plus 1 displacement then you we require to find out the uh, displacement at i plus 2. So all the i's will be replaced by i plus 1 and repeat the above steps to find the response at i plus 2 that is the next time step and so on. So these steps are repeated so we build up the response uh, quantities at each time uh, steps and then we can plot the graphs. But the main thing is the choice of uh, the time step delta t which governs the stability and convergence of the system. Okay. The solution at time step i plus 1 is determined from the equation of motion at time i without using equation of motion at i plus 1. You have observed this that uh, the solution that we have obtained is uh, equation of motion is solved at time i but equation of motion at i plus 1 was not known. The elastic and damping forces are determined explicitly using the known displacement and velocities at two previous steps i and i minus 1. So such method are is called explicit method of integration. 
so for stability delta t shall be chosen small enough the condition is that delta t divided by capital t n where capital t n is the fundamental uh, time period what is fundamental time period if we find the lowest natural frequency of the system then fundamental time period can be determined from the lowest natural frequency if the frequency is expressed in cycle per second then fundamental frequency is just reciprocal of the frequency expressed in hertz so delta t by capital t n is less than 1 by pi that relationship is useful for choosing the delta t now you from this relation you can see that you can see that delta t is less than equal to uh, 0.1 tn if i do this 1 by pi approximately so it shows that if delta t is less than tn by pi uh, for any delta t this uh, system is converges but it is not so usually delta t should be less than 0.1 uh, that is one tenth of the time period at least but for earthquake motion even the smaller time step are necessary and can be chosen for accurate result okay now let us discuss newmark method okay first i will discuss the basic procedure and then we will go to this non iterative formulation and then we will illustrate with a problem the velocity and displacement at t is equal to t i plus 1 say it is u dot i plus 1 is the velocity at t i plus 1 and displacement is u i plus 1 these quantities are at time instant t is equal to t i plus 1 ok so new mark has given two equations you can see this u dot i plus 1 equal to u dot i that is the say i plus 1 is the current time step so at the current time step velocity equal to the velocity of the previous time step plus uh, 1 minus gamma gamma is a constant into delta t delta t is the time time interval into u double dot i that is the acceleration at the previous time step plus gamma delta t into acceleration at the current time step that is u double dot i plus 1 here this equation if you see there is the displacement is given as displacement of the current time step u i plus 1 equal to displacement of the previous time step then you can see that time interval delta t multiplied by u dot i that is the velocity of the previous time step plus this is uh, say bracket 0.5 minus beta beta is another constant into delta t square multiplied by u double dot i that is the acceleration at the previous time step plus beta delta t whole square double dot u i plus 1 that is the acceleration at the current time step so in this case you see to find the displacement at this step i plus 1 you require the velocity and acceleration of the previous time step as well as the acceleration but acceleration of the present time step is also necessary so let us see how this can be accomplished typical value of this uh, constant say gamma and beta are generally 0.5 and beta lies between 1 by 6 to 1 by 4 we will prove this how what is the beta, uh, gamma and beta from this relationship okay now let us find the relations between u i plus 1 u dot i plus 1 and u double dot i plus 1 from the known quantities at time t is equal to ti that means ui 
u dot i u double dot i now two methods are available for new marks uh, integration scheme one is average acceleration method and another is linear acceleration method now first let us discuss the average acceleration method say for uh, here at time step t dot ti the acceleration is u dot i after time interval delta t that is the time step ti plus 1 the acceleration is u double dot i plus 1 so let us take in this time interval delta t an average acceleration this is the average of these two so in the time interval what is time interval delta t is the time interval equal to t i plus 1 minus t i and average acceleration average acceleration in delta t is equal to half u i double dot plus u double dot i plus 1 so this is the average acceleration so average acceleration is assumed in this time interval and the procedure is developed ok now the average acceleration at any time instant measured from this point t i so t i is taken as origin here so if i measure the time, uh, time from this uh, reference point then at a instant tau elapsed from this uh, instant t i we have this acceleration which is average because during this time interval the acceleration is uniform that is equal to average acceleration so u double dot tau equal to half u double dot i plus u double dot i plus 1 now let us integrate it with respect to tau after integrating we get u dot tau equal to tau by 2 into u double dot i plus u double dot i plus 1 plus c1 where c1 is a constant of integration again integrated because we want to arrive at the displacement quantities so u tau equal to tau square by 4 into u double dot i plus u double dot i plus 1 plus c1 into tau plus c2 where c2 is constant of integration now at tau is equal to 0 u not that at this instant that is here the tau is measured from here we take the uh, displacement as ui and also the velocity u dot here tau is 0 here we take u dot uh, 0 here u dot i so therefore c1 becomes u dot i and uh, c2 is ui so c2 is ui okay so the constant of integration is now known so therefore we can write u dot i plus 1 here at the end of the time step at t is equal to ti plus 1 we can write u dot i plus 1 equal to u dot i plus delta t divided by 2 into u double dot i plus u double dot i plus 1 so this is the velocity at the time step t i plus 1 similarly displacement at time t i plus 1 will be u i plus 1 plus u i plus u dot i into delta t plus delta t square divided by 4 u double dot i plus u double dot i plus 1 these quantities are found with reference to this equation after putting the constant of integration this is written from this equation and this is also written this is written from this equation after putting the value of uh, the constants of integration and rearranging the terms now uh, we get this equation if you compare these above two equations with the original equation of new mark that is new marks equation is u dot i plus 1 equal to u dot i plus 1 minus gamma into delta t 
u double dot i plus gamma into delta t u double dot i plus 1 and u i plus 1 equal to u i plus delta t u dot i plus 0.5 minus beta delta t square u double dot i plus beta delta t square u double dot i plus 1. If you compare these two equation with this, first let us compare this equation with this. We can immediately say that if you compare say the coefficient of u double dot i plus 1 if you compare the coefficient of u double dot i plus 1 from this two equation you can get gamma equal to half so gamma is 0.5 similarly here if you compare this with the coefficient of u double dot i 1 minus gamma is equal to half so giving it uh, gamma as 0.5 so gamma is 0.5 now from this equation you compare this coefficient of double dot i plus 1 with uh, equation say beta here it is beta is there and delta t square is there. So you uh, compare this equation with this equation you will get the coefficient of u double dot i plus 1 is 1 by 4 so therefore beta is 1 by 4 and uh, beta is 1 by 4 because it becomes this 0.5 minus beta here it becomes 0.5 minus beta into u double dot i here i compared if you compared with this coefficient of u double dot i with this equation then you will get uh, this 0.5 minus beta equal to one fourth. Similarly, if you compare the coefficient of u double dot i plus 1 in these two equation, you will directly get beta equal to 1 by 4 or 0.25. Okay. So, the linear uh, the average acceleration methods, the coefficients are gamma is equal to 0 0.5 and beta is equal to 1 by 4 that is 0 0.25. So, that is established. Now, let us go to linear acceleration scheme. In the linear acceleration scheme, the acceleration in the time interval delta t varies linearly. So, this is the assumption. So, with that assumption at any time instant tau measured from the reference t i, we can write u double dot tau equal to u double dot i plus tau by delta t into u double dot i plus 1 minus u dot u double dot i. So, that will be u double dot i. So, this is shown here this is the at any time instant this is the acceleration. Okay. So, this is represented here. Now, integrating this expression successively we now get u dot tau equal to u double dot i tau plus tau square divided by 2 delta t into u double dot i plus 1 minus u double dot i plus c1. So, that is one expression after integrating this. We are after integrating acceleration, we are now getting the velocity. Now, when the velocity is integrated, we will get the displacement. So, here from here we get u tau equal to u double dot i tau square by 2 plus tau cube by 6 delta t into u double dot i plus 1 minus u double dot i plus c1 tau plus c2. Now, the c1 and c2 have to be determined from the condition given at t is equal to t i. So, t is equal to t i that is from where we are measuring tau is taken as tau 0. So, therefore, at tau is equal to 0 we are getting this u 0 is equal to u i at this instant and u dot 0 is equal to u dot i. So, utilizing this known information utilizing this information we now get c1 equal to u dot i and c2 is equal to ui. So, now the 
expression for displacement and velocity can be written fully. Okay. So, expression for uh, velocity after integration of acceleration becomes this and acceleration for displacement after integrating the velocity becomes this. Putting this constant of integration that we have determined, we now write u dot i plus 1 that is the velocity, we get this expression after rearranging some uh, uh, quantities and then u i plus 1 that is the displacement, we get u i plus u dot i delta t plus delta t square bracket 1 by 6 u double dot i plus 1 plus 1 by 3 u double dot i. So, this is uh, uh, obtained after putting the value of c1 equal to that we obtain u dot i and c2 equal to ui and after uh, some rearrangement we arrive at these quantities. Now, if you compare these two equation with the new mark equation that I have written first, we can get that coefficient of u double dot i plus 1 here is 1 by 2 uh, delta t by 2 equal to gamma delta t. So, that means gamma becomes 0 0.5 directly. From here also if you compare the coefficient of u double dot i with this equation, you also get 1 minus gamma equal to half. So, ultimately giving gamma equal to 0 0.5. So, linear acceleration method requires gamma equal to 0.5. Now, to find the beta, let us compare the coefficient of u double dot i plus 1. So, u double dot i plus 1 is here the coefficient of 1 by 6 delta t square. Now, here the coefficient of u double dot i plus 1 is beta delta t square. So, therefore, beta is equal to 1 by 6. So, for linear acceleration method, we have very important conclusion that constant of Newmark integration scheme that is gamma and beta are found as 0 0.5 and 1 by 6 respectively. So, in the integration scheme or numerical evaluation, we will uh, use this uh, gamma equal to 0 0.5 and beta is equal to 1 by 6 if it is linear acceleration method. If it is average acceleration method, then we will use gamma equal to 0 0.5 and beta is equal to 1 by 4. Okay. Now, this formulation basic procedure that I have discussed, let us write it in a incremental form that will be useful to carry out the calculations easily. So, u dot i plus 1 that we have obtained is equal to u dot i plus 1 minus gamma into delta t u double dot i plus gamma delta t u double dot i plus 1. Now, here directly I have written the incremental velocity. How the incremental velocity is written? u i double dot equal to the difference of velocity at instant i plus 1 and i. So, from this equation you can see if I transfer this to left hand side then it becomes delta u dot i. So, this is the uh, this uh, increment of velocity. So, from this equation increment of velocity can be written as delta u dot i equal to delta t u double dot i plus gamma delta t delta u double dot i. So, what is delta u dot double dot i? This is again the incremental acceleration and it is found as u double dot i plus 1 minus u double dot i and the uh, displacement delta u i incremental displacement is u i plus 1 minus u i. So, these are the incremental quantity that we require to formulate the equation of motion in this form. Now, knowing this quantity that is u i plus 1 equal to u i plus delta t u dot i plus 
0.5 minus beta delta t square u double dot i plus beta delta t square u double dot i plus 1. We now can write delta u i equal to delta t u dot i plus delta t u dot i plus delta t square divided by 2 u double dot i plus beta delta t square delta u double dot i. So, this uh, in incremental form we have got the equation. Okay. Now, from this equation you see this is the incremental displacement that we have obtained as uh, discussed in the uh, previous slide. Now, if I want to get uh, this incremental acceleration from this equation, we can obtain it divide both sides by beta delta t square then uh, we will get it say 1 divided by beta delta t square into delta u i and this quantity will be transferred here you can see. So, minus 1 divided by beta delta t u dot i and this is also transferred here. So, it will be minus 1 by 2 beta uh, because delta t square delta t square will get cancelled and u double dot i. So, this is the incremental acceleration as in terms of incremental displacement and the velocity and acceleration at the previous time steps. Okay. So, substitute above all these quantities uh, especially this incremental acceleration in the incremental velocity acceleration. What is incremental velocity acceleration? This is the incremental velocity acceleration delta u dot i equal to delta t u double dot i plus gamma delta t into delta u double dot i. So, substituting this delta u double dot i in this equation we now get delta u dot i equal to gamma divided by beta delta t into delta u i minus gamma by beta into u dot i plus delta t into 1 minus gamma divided by 2 beta into u double dot i. So, we have got incremental velocity in terms of this incremental displacement and the acceleration and velocity at the previous time steps. Okay. Now, substitute all these incremental quantities that is incremental displacement delta u i, incremental velocity delta u dot i and incremental acceleration delta u double dot i in incremental form of equation of motion. Equation of motion now is written in the incremental form m delta u double dot i plus c delta u dot i equal to k delta u i equal to delta p i. Now, this equation is a dynamic equilibrium equation where the inertia force is involved. Now, after rearranging this equation, it can be written in this form k cap into delta u i equal to delta p cap where p cap uh, delta p cap is the effective increment of load and k cap is the this uh, effective stiffness. Now, after manipulating this equation that means substituting these quantities delta u double dot i delta u dot i delta u i and then rearranging the terms you will get the stiffness term that is uh, the coefficient of delta u i becomes k plus gamma divided by beta delta t into c plus 1 by beta delta t square into m where m and c are the uh, mass and damping of the system. k is the spring constant. So, now you can see the stiffness term is modified k is the original stiffness, but these additional terms comes here to form the effective stiffness term. Then effective increment of load delta p i becomes this is uh, delta p i 
that is the, the difference of load plus 1 divided by beta delta t into m plus gamma by beta into c into u dot i plus 1 by 2 beta m plus delta t into gamma divided by 2 beta minus 1 into c into u double dot i. So, these terms are uh, obtained when you substitute this uh, all this incremental quantity here and then separate the terms. One is the uh, term with the incremental displacement, incremental uh, uh, velocity and incremental acceleration that you are substituting here and after uh, rearrangement you will find that uh, effective stiffness is becoming this and the equation of motion can be written equivalent to static equilibrium equation k effective into delta ui equal to delta p cap k cap equal to delta ui equal to delta p cap. So, delta p is the original increment of load but here this is modified in view of the other parameters that is involved in, in displacement incremental velocity and incremental acceleration. So, this is your incremental load and this is the incremental stiffness. So, just solving this equation we get delta ui equal to k cap inverse into delta pi. So, once we get the incremental displacement then we can find the displacement at i plus 1 equal to ui plus delta ui. Now, let us see about this uh, acceleration uh, display velocity and acceleration. Now, after obtaining incremental displacement we can now obtain the incremental velocity with this expression incremental velocity is gamma divided by beta delta t into delta u i minus gamma divided by beta into u dot i plus delta t into 1 minus gamma divided by 2 beta into u double dot i. Then uh, the incremental acceleration delta u double dot i equal to 1 divided by beta into delta t square into delta u i minus 1 by beta delta t into u dot i minus 1 divided by 2 beta into u double dot i. After that we can calculate other incremental quantities. So, we can calculate this delta u i that is incremental velocity as u i dot plus delta u i dot that we have found from this equation. Then we get this incremental acceleration is equal to u i double dot plus delta u i double dot that is the velocity and acceleration at time instant at t is equal to t i plus 1 note that from knowing the incremental quantities of velocity and acceleration and even displacement and knowing the displacement and acceleration in the current step, we can determine the acceleration and velocity at the next time step i plus 1. So, once you get this, we can get the acceleration u double dot i plus 1 after solving the equation of equilibrium m inverse into p i plus 1 minus c u dot i plus 1 minus k u i plus 1. So, this is just a direct solution of this acceleration quantity that is if I write the equation of motion at t is equal to t i plus 1 then I can write m u i plus 1 double dot plus c u i double dot plus k u i equal to p i. So, we can get that u i plus 1 is equal to 1 by m that is m inverse 
PI, PI not effective original load minus CUI dot minus KUI I plus 1 I plus 1. So, all the quantities are at I plus 1. So, we are uh, suffixing uh, the index I plus 1. Okay. So, you got the acceleration at time step i plus 1. Okay. Stability of the Newmark method has been given in different texts. So, I, I am uh, discussing about the stability with reference to some book that is the numerical methods by infinite element by Bathe and Wilson. So, the method is stable if delta t by t n delta t is the time step and capital T is the time period fundamental time period of uh, system is equal to or greater than this factor 1 by pi into root 2 into 1 by root over gamma minus 2 beta. So, from this relation we can get uh, the delta t which will be appropriate for the time integration. In average acceleration we use uh, this gamma is equal to 0.5 and beta is equal to 1 by 4. So, if you see if you put gamma is equal to 0.5 here a very interesting result comes and beta is equal to 0.25 the result is this side is right hand side is infinity that means delta t by capital T n is less than equal to infinity. So, theoretically shows that any value of delta t any finite value of delta t can be used, but it is not so. For actual uh, integration you will see that delta t should be small enough otherwise the, the scheme will not converge the result will not converge. As a guidelines delta t should be found as uh, one tenth of the fundamental time period. But if this rule is not satisfied then you can decrease further the delta t and sometimes so much low quantity of delta t will also bring various um, absurd results. So, therefore, delta t should be chosen after different trials. In linear acceleration method if you see that just using this formula if gamma is equal to 0.5 and beta is equal to 0.25 then after substituting this this become delta t by capital T n is equal to less than equal to 0.551 that means approximately 0.55. So, in Newmark method what we have observed solution at the time step i plus 1 is found from the equation of motion at i plus 1. This type of integration method is known as implicit method. Let us illustrate a problem. Consider a cantilever pole subjected to a force F t that you are seeing here. It is a cantilever pole subjected to a force F t. The length of the cantilever is 6 meter and uh, other data that is given fundamental natural frequency is 62.83. 62 0.83. This is the fundamental frequency of this uh, in radian circular frequency. Then uh, the damping ratio is 0 0.02 and we are using the approximate mode shape function just to uh, illustrate the procedure. So, phi 1 x is equal to 0 0.005 x square. Okay. Now, let us use the Newmark's beta method given the force applied on this structure is in this form. So, time history of the force is given here as this in this form. So, here you can see the force exists from 0 to 0 0.08 uh, second and we have uh, sampled this force at 0 0.01 second. Okay. Now, let us uh, obtain this time period. If you see the time period of motion 
time period can be found out as 2 pi by omega 1 is the lowest frequency. So, in that case you will see here for this problem that uh, the delta t if I choose as 0 0.01 it will be sufficient. So, 0 0.01 sampling time for this uh, force is uh, correctly given here we need not do any interpolation. But if you want to make any changes of delta t not equal to the same as given for the force sampling period then you have to do the linear interpolation. Okay. The equation of motion in discretized form is eta 1 double dot t plus 2 j 1 omega 1 eta dot 1 plus omega 1 square eta 1 equal to q 1 t t where q 1 t is the generalized force because the force is applied at x is equal to l x is measured from the uh, the base so x is measured from the base so therefore we are uh, expressing the force in the form of direct delta function f t equal to direct delta x minus 6 and phi 1 into phi 1 x so phi 1 x is this quantity so therefore we get q 1 t equal to 0.18 ft so whenever we want this generalized for force from actual force we can obtain this by using a multiplier 0.18 in this case so 0.18 is the multiplier here now equation in incremental form is written delta eta double dot i i is actually first mode we have taken so let us give one plus 2 j 1 omega 1 delta eta dot 1 plus omega 1 square delta eta 1 equal to delta q it is the q 1 ok. So, here m is equal to if you observe this equation here the coefficient of inert acceleration is 1. So, we take m is equal to 1 c is equal to the coefficient of this uh, this velocity is 2 j 1 omega 1. So, we take c is equal to 2 j 1 omega 1 and coefficient of displacement term is omega 1 square. So, k is equal to omega 1 square. Time period here 0 0.1 second. So, we choose delta t equal to 0 0.01 second. Initial conditions are given at t is equal to 0 eta is equal to 0, acceleration is 0 and uh, from this diagram the earlier slide that we have shown the force distribution you can see at 0 at time 0 the force is also 0. So, we get this at uh, this instant at t is equal to 0 we get the uh, this acceleration acceleration is m inverse m is here 1 equal to uh, t 0 minus c into u 0 dot minus k u 0 here of course c is this quantity and k is this quantity m is 1 and you can see p 0 is 0 here so ultimately acceleration at time instant 0 t 0 is also 0. So therefore initial conditions we have determined. Now calculation at the next time step t 1 equal to 0 was the initial starting time 0 plus delta t. Delta q 1 equal to because we have seen in this uh, difference of force it starts from 0 if you see the graph here the at t is equal to 0 0.01 it is 40 newton and here it is 0. So, delta q 1 is 40 minus 0 into 0.18. So, that multiplier we have to use. So, we get 7.2. So, for linear acceleration method we choose point, uh, gamma is equal to 0 0.5 beta is equal to 1 by 6. So, therefore, effective stiffness after applying this formula k cap equal to k plus this gamma divided by beta delta t c 
plus 1 divided by beta delta t square m. You can understand what is k. This k is omega 1 square. What is beta? Beta is this quantity and uh, c is actually 2 j is the damping ratio into omega 1 and m is also 1. So, substituting all these value omega 1 is 62.83 we all these numerical values is substituted in this expression we get k cap equal to 6.4702 into 10 to the power 4 ok. Then we get delta q1 cap that is the effective load is equal to delta q1 plus 1 by beta delta t m plus gamma divided by beta into c into eta dot 0 plus bracket 1 by 2 beta m plus delta t into gamma divided by 2 beta minus 1 into c into eta double dot 0. Now this quantity at time t is equal to 0 is 0 we have found this is 0. So, therefore, delta q1 at this next time step we have found that it is 40 to 60. So, variation of force here at a time delta t equal to 0 0.01. So, delta q1 now will be that is the difference is 40. Uh, and we are multiplying by with 0.18. So, therefore, we are getting this equal to 7.2 because it was starting from 0. So, 0 to 40 that is 1 into 0.18 it is 7.2 ok. So, therefore, given the initial displacement 0 initial velocity 0 and initial acceleration is also coming to be 0 because the force at the time t is equal to 0 is 0. We now get this delta eta 1 equal to 1.113 into 10 to the power minus 4 delta eta 1 double dot equal to 6.676 after substituting the appropriate value. So, in the next time step we now calculate. So, this is given at time step delta t that is starting time was 0 and then next time step delta t we are getting this quantity this uh, generalized coordinate of displacement is this generalized coordinate for velocity is 0 0.033 and generalized coordinate for acceleration is 6.67. Then uh, in the next time step that is t is equal to 2 delta t. Here we are getting the difference is here you can see here 60 to 40. So, 20 into 0.18 that is 3.6 ok. So, here delta q2 is uh, uh, 3.6. So, other quantities are substituted because these are already known at the time step delta t that is t 0 was 0 and t 1 was delta t. So, now we are going to find the response at uh, t 2 equal to 0 plus 2 delta t that is 2 delta t. So, delta q 2 is 3.6 and eta dot delta t is equal to 0 0.033 eta double dot delta t is equal to 6.67 and uh, after doing this operation we now get this uh, increment of displacement at this time instant that t plus delta t that will be this uh, 2 delta t actually will be 3.7041 into 10 to the power minus 4. So, after getting this uh, we get the acceleration as minus 17.832 this is the incremental acceleration. Similarly, incremental velocity we get as minus 0.1225. This is just substituting the value numerical values of this quantity because this we already obtained and these are known quantities. So, we obtain this as this. So, the result at the next time step for the generalized coordinate and its derivatives 
আর ইটা টু ডেল্টা টি ইকুয়াল টু ফোর পয়েন্ট এইট ওয়ান সেভেন ইন্টু টেন টু দি পাওয়ার মাইনাস ফোর বিকজ দি ইনক্রিমেন্টাল কোয়ান্টিটি হ্যাভ টু বি এডেড দেন ইটা ডট টু ডেল্টা টি ইকুয়াল টু মাইনাস পয়েন্ট জিরো এইট নাইন ওয়ান অ্যান্ড ইটা ডাবল ডট টু ডেল্টা টি বিকামস মাইনাস ইলেভেন পয়েন্ট ওয়ান ফাইভ ফাইভ বাট দিজ আর অনলি দি জেনারেলাইজ কোর্ডিনেটস ভ্যালু সো উই কনভার্ট দিস ইন্টু ফিজিক্যাল রেসপন্স দ্যাট ইজ ওয়াই এক্স টি ইজ নোন এস ফাই এক্স ইন্টু ইটা টি সো ভেলোসিটি ওয়াই ডট এক্স টি ইজ ইকাল টু ফাই এক্স ইটা ডট টি অ্যান্ড অ্যাক্সিলারেশন ওয়াই ডাবল ডট এক্স টি ইকুয়াল টু ফাই এক্স ইটা ডাবল ডট টি সো উই ক্যান ফাইন্ড এট টি ইজ ইকাল টু জিরো দিজ আর দি কোয়ান্টিটিস এট টি প্লাস টি ইকুয়াল টু ডেল্টা টি সে জিরো প্লাস ডেল্টা টি দি ডিসপ্লেসমেন্ট ইজ টু পয়েন্ট জিরো থ্রি ফোর ইন্টু টেন টু দি পাওয়ার মাইনাস সিক্স মিটার ভেলোসিটি ইজ ফাইভ পয়েন্ট নাইন ফোর টেন টু দি পাওয়ার মাইনাস থ্রি মিটার পার সেকেন্ড অ্যান্ড অ্যাক্সিলারেশন ইজ ওয়ান পয়েন্ট টু মিটার পার সেকেন্ড স্কোয়ার সিমিলারলি এট দি নেক্সট টাইম স্টেপ টি ইজ ইকাল টু টু ডেল টি দি ডিসপ্লেসমেন্ট ইজ এইট পয়েন্ট সিক্স সেভেন ওয়ান ইন্টু টেন টু দি পাওয়ার মাইনাস ফাইভ মিটার অ্যান্ড দিস ভেলোসিটি ইজ মাইনাস পয়েন্ট জিরো ওয়ান সিক্স মিটার পার সেকেন্ড অ্যাক্সিলারেশন ইজ টু মিটার পার সেকেন্ড স্কোয়ার দিস ইজ ইন অ্যাকর্ডেন্স উইথ দিস সেপারেশন অফ ভেরিয়েবল টেকনিক দ্যাট ইজ ইউজড ইন কন্টিনিউস সিস্টেম ওকে সো দি প্রসিডিউর ক্যান বি রিপিটেড অ্যান্ড থ্রি ডেল্টা টি ফোর ডেল্টা টি অ্যান্ড দ্যাট লাইক দ্যাট ইট ক্যান গো অন সো ফর রিপিটেটিভ ক্যালকুলেশন ইট ইজ ভেরি কনভিনিয়েন্ট টু রাইট এ কোড অন দিস প্রবলেম অ্যান্ড ইজিলি ক্যালকুলেট ফর এনি Uh, time span but one thing is to be cautioned that convergence of this uh, scheme has to be tested and that uh, requires the proper selection of delta t let us summarize today's lecture in this lecture we have discussed the direct integration method to solve the equation of motion in time domain central difference method and new marks method are discussed in detail and stability of the numerical scheme was also discussed lastly a problem was illustrated a uh, problem was of long cantilever pole fixed at the base and it is subjected to an arbitrary force uh, at the tip and uh, this was evaluated at three steps say 0 delta t and 2 delta t and procedure can be repeated but all the steps are not uh, completed here okay thank you very much mm -hmm.